And welcome to EWTN's continuing programme on Reflections in Advent. We come to you today from the glorious Cathedral Church of St Peter here in Belfast, situated in northeastern Ireland. My name is Father Vincent Cushnahan, a priest from the Diocese of Down and Connor. My role in our diocese is as a judge in our tribunal office and also assisting in St. Colum Kills Parish here in the city. Today, the church reflects and meditates on the third Sunday of Advent, a time of rejoicing. This Sunday is entitled Gaudete Sunday, a word which means to rejoice. The church gives us very suitable readings today to help us focus and concentrate ourselves on this task. We hear from the prophet Isaiah as he encourages us to trust and hope in God. Our Sam, the Magnificat of Mary, displays to us how she, in uncertain terms, placed her fervent hope in a joyful way in God's plan for her. Today's Gospel highlights to us the role of John the Baptist and how he, in humility, pointed the way to Christ our Saviour. Advent, as we already know, is a time of penance, a time of preparedness, and a time to turn back. This is not a very sombre task, but one we should undertake with joy and inner peace. God's plan for us is to bring us to himself, and Advent is a perfect time in joy to turn our lives back to him. These four weeks are crammed, stuffed filled with liturgical readings and with prayers that help us to focus on the coming of Jesus, not just at Christmas time in, as we celebrate the history of the Incarnation, but also Jesus coming back for the second time at the end of the world. And indeed, in every time we receive his precious body and blood in the Eucharistic sacrifice that is the Mass. Advent, then, is a threefold preparation a preparation for the acknowledgement of the historical coming of Jesus, of his second coming, and of our daily reception of him in the Eucharist. This we should undertake with joy. But what is joy? The world gives us a panoply of explanations of joy. It gives us the understanding that joy is selfish pleasure or gratification or filling our senses with wonderful things that help us to feel good. Joy, however, in our Christian context is a very different reality. Joy is an inner peace and contentment, knowing that we are doing and following the will of God. God's will for us we discern through prayer, good actions, and with spiritual direction. This Advent season be a time for us, therefore, to experience again a refocusing of God's will in our lives. The prophet Isaiah tells us that we are to prepare a way for the Lord. This foreshadowing of Jesus is presented to us in the first reading. 
the people of Israel, in their travails, disappointments, and challenges, looked to their prophets for direction. Not just direction, but also a sense of hope, trust, and expectation. This season of Advent, therefore, is also a time of expectation, not a worrying wait, as we would do in a doctor's surgery or in a dental practice. No, this wait should be filled with activity, an expectation which is joyful. How do we do that, though, in these four crammed weeks as we prepare for Christmas? Well, we can do so by works of charity, giving of ourselves, of our time, to other people in kindness and generosity. Meditating every day, perhaps, for a few moments on the Scriptures, the rich gift that, that the Church gives to us as we prepare for the coming of Christ. Let us take a look for a second at the psalm that the Church offers us today as reflection. On most Sundays of the year, this psalm is taken, of course, naturally from the book of Psalms, the Songs of David. Interestingly today, however, our psalm is taken from Luke's Gospel, that glorious encounter of the Virgin Mary with the angel Gabriel, as he brought her news of a great joy, a joy that she was to bear the Saviour of the world. What was Mary's reaction? It wasn't one of uncertainty. It wasn't one of, oh no, I can't do that. She certainly didn't refuse. It was a humble acceptance of God's will for her. This Advent then, this third Sunday of Advent, we should use Mary, our mother, as our model and guide for the Christian life. If we look at the vestments the priest can wear on this Gaudete Sunday, they are unusual. They are a mixture of purple and of white. Formally, we call it rose. This is also a symbol of what we are, are to experience today. We experience, of course, as I said, the penitential element of Advent, that turning back towards God by converting our lives. It also looks forward to the expectation of the coming of Jesus, both at Christmas and the end of time. That color, white, the church uses to celebrate joy. And if you get out your paintbrush or your coloring pens and color purple and white together, you get rose, this Sunday's liturgical color, a mixture of joyful expectation and also of watchful penance and penitence. These combination, this combination is used particularly this Sunday, to highlight the tone of the readings. Mary, in her humility, gave the world its Saviour. She did not do so for her own glory or for prestige. She did so in answer to God's plan. But let us take a look at this young woman who gave so freely of herself for the salvation of the world. She lived in an uncertain time. She lived in a time which was filled with problems and difficulties. And being a young woman in first century Palestine was a very insecure and unwelcome environment for a woman, especially one expecting a child to be in. And yet, she trusted in God. Fundamentally, the heart of joyfulness is trust. It isn't selfish desire. It isn't engrandizement or lustfulness. 
It is the desire to serve others, to give of ourselves, and to cherish our relationship with God. This Advent is a wonderful opportunity for each of us to use the example of Mary to refocus our own lives in preparation for Christ's coming. The Gospel today tells us about John the Baptist, that baptizer who pointed the way to the Lord Jesus. He was a perfect example and model of humility, totally giving himself to the message. His work, his mission, is reflected in our own lives when we can generously give others our own selves in practice and in prayer. Advent too, then, is also an opportunity for us for quiet reflection, a time to look about turning around our lives in practical ways, also prayerfully. God is our friend. If God was not our friend, then we would not be able to talk to him, to share with him, to turn to him in need and to give him joyful praise. Our thankfulness to God is his gift to us that we return to him with a generous and joyful heart. Why not use the weeks ahead to reflect on your own life by taking the daily scriptures, by praying the rosary, or by simple acts of meditation and ask God to guide you, like in the second reading, asking the Spirit to show you the way that you should take to reform, to restore, and to renew your life, not just spiritually, but also in practice. Advent is a time for us then to adopt prayerful reflection for our lives, asking God to help renew us, restore us, and revive us as we turn our lives back to him in preparation for his coming. Many people often ask me in spiritual conversations, Father, how can I, what can I do to make my life conform with God's? How can I live a Christian life? How can I use this time of Advent to do that, to turn back to him? I would often say to them, it is better to do small things to turn back to God than have a grand plan. When we create grand plans, we often disappoint ourselves, become frustrated, and give up. However, we can set ourselves achievable goals that encourage us to work for greater things. What might these goals be during this Advent time? Well, something that challenges you, that makes your life a little difficult, but also that is helpful to others. Think of the work colleague you do not get along with. Think of the family member you have been avoiding for some time. Perhaps it's an elderly parent or a child who causes you difficulties or problems in life. You could spend a little time with them, being cheerful, being generous, and being kind. Another way to do this is by adoration of the Most Blessed Sacrament. We live in a world challenged by busyness and noise. This busyness and noise gets in the way of God. It blocks out his gentle voice, asking us to prepare his way. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament helps to still our minds, help us to converse with God, deepen our relationship with him, so that we too can share that inner joy with a broken, troubled, and fragile world. 
Let's take a pause. And why not join us after the break as we continue to reflect on the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday. Welcome back and thank you for joining us as we continue to reflect on the third Sunday of Advent with me, Father Vincent Kushnahan, here at St. Peter's Cathedral, Belfast, in the northeastern corner of Ireland. Before the break, we were reflecting a bit on the readings for this Sunday. We remember how it's called Gaudete Sunday, a word which means to rejoice. We talked a little bit about the rose vestments being a mixture of the repentant purple and the joyful white of our liturgical seasons. Also, we looked at Mary, a model and guide of the Christian life, as she humbly accepted God's will in the uncertain times of her circumstances. We reflected on St. John the Baptist as being a model of humility, preparing the way for the Lord, and how Advent is a time of preparation, repentance, and joyful expectation. We reflected on how Christ comes not just at Christmas, but also Advent should prepare us for Christ's coming at the end of time and our reception of him of his body and blood every time we come to Mass. This threefold preparation, this threefold anticipation sits at the heart of our Advent journey. St. John the Baptist was a unique character in Scripture. If you look closely at the Gospel, the Pharisees and Levites and religious of elite of his time, ask him, who are you? Who are you? He did not answer by saying his name. He did not say, I am John. He said, I am a voice, a voice preparing the way for the Lord. He wasn't Elijah. He wasn't Isaiah or any other of the prophets. He was a voice crying in the wilderness, preparing a way for the Lord. John did not say, I am John, and I have come to point a way for the Lord. Why didn't he just give his name? Why didn't he just say, hi, I'm John. I want to show you who Jesus is. No, John wanted to be completely nothing to be absolutely zero, so that people could see right through him to the person of Jesus Christ. He wanted no glory. He wanted no adulation, no praise. He wanted the simple idea that Jesus is the center of everything we do. That is the Advent purpose. That can be our role in the lives of other people. We too can be like John the Baptist, not necessarily by going off to the wilderness, eating locusts and living in honey, but by the way we live our lives. In Ireland at the moment, if you follow the news, we are experiencing a great cultural transition. The Irish constitution in its Eighth Amendment, guarantees the rights of women and children to equality of safeguarding. This, however, has come under attack at the present time, as the government of the Republic of Ireland has, in recent times, proposed a referendum to repeal this amendment in order that it might alter its abortion laws to make it more readily available to women in Ireland. 
People ask, how can I help? What can I do to promote pro-life causes? I would say, certainly the first thing you can do is pray. Pray for change of hearts. Pray for conversion of minds and ideas. And ask the Lord to guide our governments and leaders to a true and genuine respect for all human life, the life of the mother and the life of her unborn child. This Advent, redouble your prayers for Ireland. Redouble your efforts to help us uphold a culture of life and to subvert the culture of death. If you're watching this in Ireland, why not join a pro-life protest? Why not help hand out leaflets or talk to people in a respectful and loving manner about the dignity of human life? Why not visit EWTN in Ireland and join with us in our rosary campaign as we pray for the intercession of our Blessed Mother to protect the lives of mothers and their unborn children? That could be a spiritual exercise for you during what remains of this short liturgical season of Advent. When you talk to people about pro-life or any issues that the Church has a concern about, remember always to do so with charity, with love, with firmness of your convictions, but also the deep-rooted joy that the gospel gives to each one of us. Why not on this Gaudete Sunday, in the short time that remains to us in this Advent season, pray the Rosary Rally for life, for the mother and the child, that their dignity may be upheld, their lives be respected. This Advent is a time then to redouble our efforts, not just here in Ireland, but also in the United States and across the world, to promote the Church's desire and calling to uphold the dignity of every human life. Human life, from the first moment of conception to natural death, is a human right. Life is not a commodity. Life is a precious gift. Let that also be part of your thinking when you talk to others with respect, with love, with charity, but with firmness in your convictions. John the Baptist was a voice crying in the wilderness to prepare a way for the Lord. Why not be like him, using his example and guide to let your voice be heard in the wilderness and desolation of our modern Western civilization? Our civilization is facing a very great crisis, not necessarily a crisis of physical problems, but a crisis of intellectual problems. Our Western civilization is facing a crisis of ideas. During this Advent, why not take the opportunity to go and buy a catechism of the Catholic Church? Find out what our church teaches about the ideas, the beliefs, the doctrine and theology that is so beautiful, so rich, and so relevant to our age. Let us just then sum up in the last moments that we have together. Advent, as I said, is a time of repentance, a time of joy, a time of expectation for the threefold coming of Christ, the historical encounter of his incarnation, for his coming at the end of time, and of course, our reception of his precious body and blood at Holy Communion. Therefore, let this time be filled with trust like Mary, humility 
like John the Baptist, and joy like the prophet Isaiah. We are the voices crying in the wilderness. Let our actions, our prayers, our very demeanor magnify God our Savior, point the way to him so that one day we may join with the angels and the saints when our lives are over for the glorious coming of our Savior, his glorious heavenly celestial presence that one day we will enjoy. My prayer then this third Sunday of Advent is for each of you that the Lord will bless you and keep you, guard and protect you, fill your hearts with hope and joy. Next year in Ireland, we have the World Meeting of Families in August. Why not come to Ireland and visit us for that? Or if you are in Belfast, come and visit our beautiful cathedral here at St. Peter's. Please join us next week as my good friend, Father Patrick McCafferty, will journey with you through the scriptural readings of the fourth Sunday of Advent. <music>